ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the show. And welcome to a third Thursday. Is it? Chat, what day is it? Is it? Th it's Thursday. Welcome to a Thursday impromptu stream. Everybody, glad to see you. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Good afternoon, good evening, good night, whatever time it is, whatever day it is. I hope that the day is treating you well. I hope that the week is treating you well, and I wish that I could say the same. It's been a little bit rough for me, but that's okay because we're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna do ourselves an impromptu stream. And yeah, for for those of you that are not from for those of you yeah. that are not familiar, uh, this is this is dead Maria. This is. This is, I'm feeling lazy, and I don't want to do the rig and all the other stuff, Maria, today. Uh, I usually I usually don't do the full 3D animated avatar on, on impromptu streams. But all the same, we're still here. We're still going to have a good time. Without further ado, what, let's say we get out of the office and actually go over to the game. Uh, you may notice... I'm not dead in the bottom corner of your screen. I, I am choosing to test out the ping tuber that I have uh, for days like this so that you don't you don't have to miss out on me completely. Um, but of course, this ping tuber avatar is a little bit older, so I, I don't have the the pilot suit version, uh, the pilot milf version of the ping tuber avatar. so, uh, I've kind of had this like on the back burner on standby just in case I needed it and just haven't really found occasion to use it until now. So, uh, but there you go. I do have a ping tuber. I would like to do something a little goofy, but, uh, you know, that's, as well as I, I've looking suitably annoyed. I mean, I am a little bit annoyed then, especially with you. Oh, don't worry, Erst. You didn't miss much. Y you missed a level 10 hype train and a bunch of people, you know, getting me all self-conscious with their gift sub bullshit. But aside from that, you didn't miss much. We haven't actually done anything yet. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's what, so this is, uh, and again, tangent here, but, like, one of the things that I have seen people like on the YouTubes and stuff say and say, oh, why, why do you reuse thumbnails for your videos? Uh, why, why don't you have like cool art and stuff on your channel uh, like, like the other VTubers? And I'm like, when you say that, do you mean the other VTubers like Hololive and V Shoujo and you know those other agency VTubers because so for those of you that don't know, uh, those VTubers often have thousands, if not tens of thousands of fans and subscribers and things like that. And a lot of them are artists, and they'll just like spend days or weeks working on high quality art that they then just give to them to use. So, you know, you see, uh, again, like the, the Hollow Live girls and stuff, they have a new high quality art thumbnail for every single video that they post. It's because there are people out there that do that. I'm not going to ask you guys to do that. But like, there's a component there. It's, it's no one's, I mean, I'm not going to say that Hollow Live and, and, and V Shoujo don't pay the artists when they make that art. Maybe they do. I don't actually know. But uh, yeah, and, and that's that's my thing, Rose. Like, it, it always makes me feel weird when people are like why are you as an independent self-started vtuber not like you know an agency vtuber that makes six figures a year and it's like because we literally couldn't be living in more different worlds but that's there's always going to be comparisons uh as as a certain nano trace and quartermaster has often said uh comparison is the thief of joy so Anyway, I, I figured I would address that because I recently saw a comment about that, about, oh, why why don't you have all this high quality art? And it's be like, because all of the shit that you see in the stream, I did myself and I'm not an artist. So there are plenty of indie VTubers that have that, too. They just happen to have artists making fan art. Of it. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is like 
some of them have fan art, some of them commission art. Um, and, and, you know, that's that's another thing as, uh, like, you know, you have VTubers that get into this to to entertain themselves, but they're already, like, financially stable and they have a lot of disposable income. You know, when, whenever you see a VTuber out there that has the 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 live 2D model with the giant bouncing titties and and 15 different expressions and and you know high quality animations and all like when you see that understand that 9 times out of 10 that person behind the avatar did not make that they did not create that themselves they paid someone probably an outrageous amount of money to make all of that for them. Um, and that is like the, the exact opposite of what I have done. Um, everything, like I said, everything you see on the stream, uh, the emotes, the backgrounds, the model itself, everything that you see, I did myself. And as much as possible, I have tried to do it without spending any money. So, you know, it's, for for those of you and and I know I'm this is mostly going to fall on deaf ears cuz I'm I'm sure they're not here in the chat right now but you know if you're if you're on the YouTube's watching this assuming that I don't cut it out of the stream entirely uh but if you're on the YouTube's watching this and you're wondering why you don't see the same level of polish and quality on my stream as you do on professional VTubers streams um, that, that's your answer. I'm not a professional VTuber at all. I am an amateur and I'm doing this as a hobby. Uh, I'm not doing this as a marketing gimmick. I'm not doing this to sell a brand. I'm just out here playing games and having a good time with my community. So like, well, and, and Vin, I appreciate that. Like, I know, like I said, for, for most of you that are here in the stream right now, this is going to fall on deaf ears. So it's, it's not really for you. Um, but like, yeah, at, at the end of the day, there's a lot of people that, that don't just hold me, but hold other VTubers up to a, an impossible standard. And, and especially, you know, if you're familiar with standards of beauty, it's, it's a very similar thing where, you know, if, if you're not a sucking Victoria's Secret bikini model, then that's not, that's not good enough. It's not good enough. You might as well be the ugliest woman on the planet if you're not a supermodel. And, like, it's it's kind of the same thing. That The same thing is, is, is happening in the VTubing community right now, where it's like, either you're a professional agency VTuber with hundreds of thousands of dollars behind your content, or you're garbage and no one should watch you. At least in the opinions of certain people. VTuber like a ham radio operator level. Yeah, exactly. Like, again, I didn't know anything about this when I started doing this uh, way back in September of last year. And and everything that you see was done by me and all of the skills that I needed to learn in order to do this, I learned to do. Like, I, there were a lot of things that I didn't know how to do uh, when I first started this out. And, and I kind of, like, I taught myself the skills that I needed that I didn't already have in order to make this work. Like Streamlabs, I'd never streamed before September of last year. Um, I had to learn how Streamlabs work and and you guys, especially those of you that have been around for a while, you know, like I'm trying to slowly improve the quality of the stream by learning how Streamlabs works and learning how, you know, different little things can be used to uh, to to improve the experience for you guys. So I'm always, I'm always in the back of my mind trying to think of new ways to make things better for you, to make the experience better for you. Short shorts and an oversized t-shirt is better than Victoria's Secret anyway. I mean, you've basically described half my at-home wardrobe. Muddy is a Victoria's Secret model? No, absolutely not. Uh, absolutely not. I don't. I don't know if I have the body type for that. I, I eat too much red meat. Um, I, I eat too much red meat and drink too much alcohol to be a Victoria's Secret model. I mean, I, I, guess, I guess I could rephrase that and say I eat so I can't be a Victoria's Secret model. 
Oh, no, Megas, I'm not even saying I'm plus size. I'm just saying, like, I eat food. So, like, because you can't see all of the bones in my body except for the ribs directly under my tits, um, I could never be a Victoria's Secret mom. Uh, anyway, enough of bagging on other people. Let's let's actually get to that game, shall we? Let's let's get into some tactical espionage operations. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. I don't, Chad. I'm I'm gonna be honest. I don't even remember what the hell we were doing last time. I'm guessing you aren't six foot tall. Well, I cannot. I can neither confirm nor deny my height, my weight, or my dimensions. Again, I have to have some, some level of privacy. I gotta, I gotta keep some of this to myself. I'm gonna tell you every single intimate detail about me. Tactically untactical shenanigans. Yeah, I'm gonna see if we can complete a mission without getting seen in the first three minutes. Uh, I gotta remind myself what we were doing, though. So we had mission list. Oh, right. That's what we were doing. So, I, okay, I got it. My memory is officially refreshed. Um, we just unlocked Africa, um, or, or, you know, the first mission in Africa last stream. And, uh, and yeah, we, we didn't do it because this is a very long mission. So for those of you that are not familiar with Metal Gear Solid 5, uh, this, this Pitch Dark mission is one of the exceptionally long missions in uh, in Metal Gear Solid Five, and uh, so yeah, we're 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 going to be getting stuck into this. It is going to be our first mission in Africa on this campaign, uh, so it'll be a little bit of change of scenery from what you're used to if you've been here for the other couple of streams that we did. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's have a look. Uh, of course, we are doing a hardcore OSP run. For those of you that are new or that are not familiar with the rules, you can type in uh, exclamation mark OSP, um, and that will give you a link to the Twitter machine to explain the rules of this run that I will try to adhere to as much as I can. Uh, obviously, there will be some exceptions, but uh, there is no plan. Yeah, no, don't, don't go giving me too much credit by, by thinking that I have a plan. My plan is I have no plan. Um, I was going to do OD green, but I think we're going to go with woodland camo instead for Africa. I know I said OD green in the, uh, I know I said OD green in the rules, but I, I think I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do an audible here and I think we're going to do woodland camo instead for Africa. Um, of course, horse is going to be our buddy, although I don't know if we're going to need a horse but I'm still going to bring him in anyway. And uh, yeah, let's let's do it. We will make it hot. I bet you would like Ghost, Re Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Uh, Ormagodon, I... So I played Wildlands. I was not super enthusiastic about Wildlands at launch. Uh, and I also played Wildlands on uh, console. Not on PC. Um, at least at launch, Wildlands was extremely buggy and barely functional some of the time. And so, um, as a direct result of that, I didn't. I I wasn't really excited for Breakpoint, and I know that like with mods and stuff like that, um, you can definitely. You can definitely make the game more of a hardcore experience. I have considered it, but I do not own either of the games on PC, and I don't really have any plans to, but it's, again, I, whenever people ask me, would you play X game, I say never's a long time. You know, I'm not going to say I'll never play whatever game it is that you're suggesting, because never's a long time, um, but it's, it's not in my current plans, but, but again, kind of to highlight that I don't I don't really have a plan I'm not a professional and I don't pretend to be so um yeah nothing is off the table everything is a possibility came from intel the target is 
focus angle is from Finda oil field, upstream from the landing point. A spill has covered the whole area in crude. A pipeline that crosses the Muneni River failed, and now the shore's a mess. Not to mention the villages downstream have no drinking water. to the pipeline from that facility. Taking it out should end the leak. The client this time is an environmental NGO. Destroy the facility. Stop that leak. This may seem like straight-up philanthropy, but there's another reason we agreed to it. I'm not a liar. I'd like out. Abandoned. So I know what chocolate the chip camo is. I just don't Taking understand why themselves. they call it that. Operation. Because when I see that camo, I don't... Like, the first thing that comes to mind is not chocolate chip. Like, I can see it. It, it. It's not like I don't understand why they call it that completely, but, uh... It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Trying to find some of the right to play, stuck between No Man's Sky and waiting for Patch 7 on Baldur's Gate. Uh, I mean, it's... I can't, I can't tell you which of those games to play. I personally am not super fond of No Man's Sky. I did, what, three or four playthroughs of Baldur's Gate, so, you know, obviously I'm a little bit biased, but, uh, you know, the thing I always tell people is do the thing that you want. It depends on what kind of mood you're in. Are you in the mood for something crunchy, or are you in the mood for something casual? Because, at least in my opinion, the, the main difference between those two games is No Man's Sky is a very casual and laid-back experience, whereas, um... Whereas Baldur's Gate 3 is a much more involved experience. Does this grunt have a name? Uh, probably. I don't, let me see. Staff management. What, what is this grunt's name? This is Greedy Armadillo. Which, for those of you that might be curious, I did consider... I, I went looking on the Nexus to see if there was a... If there was a way for me to set the names... Oh wait, I need to go over here. I wanted to see if there was a way for me to set the names of... Um, of the soldiers. And technically there is, but not really. It's, it's weird. There's one name change mod that actually just came out recently on the Nexus, um, but it doesn't it doesn't quite work the way that I would intend. It's digitalis. It's toxic, but it can also be used as medicine. So yeah, for those of you that don't know and and did not read the rules, again exclamation mark OSP if you're curious about the rules of this run. Um, and turn into a supply hub for Unida. The enemies have 150% vision in the daytime and 125% vision at night. So because we didn't have any control over where we started or when we started, um, we are currently forced to be in the daytime. So if I do this and I get close, yeah, they're, they're going to pretty much immediately see me, even though I'm in an appropriate camo for this environment. So what I'm gonna do is see if there's a way that I can, like, sneak over this way. Because normally the mission tries to, like, tell you to go that way. But, uh, we're, we're gonna have to do things a little bit unorthodox. Did you get the S++ soldier mod? Negative. I did not. Um, what I did instead, because, uh, again, this is OSP, so by and large we're, we're only gonna be using the equipment that we find in the missions. Um, there are other changes that I have made to help us get the equipment that we need, but like development of weapons and stuff like that is just not really a thing that we're gonna be doing in this playthrough. Um, another thing we're not doing, no Fultons, no Fultons. So another thing you're not gonna see me doing is, uh, you know, slurping up every single enemy on the map with a balloon. I don't, if I remember right, I don't Extraction think I can go this way. Base. Maybe I can? I don't really remember, because I think, detected. I the think there's an updated. enemy outpost over in that direction. 
but I'm basically trying to go a different way from from what the mission typically intends you to do. Eyed right, horse, we're 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 far enough away from the checkpoint, so let's uh let's get this show on the road, horse. Now, where do I actually need to go? That's the okay. There we go. Another thing that I did, because again, I'm a modaholic, I went ahead and joined up on the uh, on the Modders Heaven Discord because I've heard I, I went ahead and grabbed uh, the Zeta framework for Infinite Heaven because it helps improve mod compatibility. Uh, but I also saw that apparently somebody had mentioned it in the chat last stream and I had no idea what the hell they were talking about. Um, but apparently, for those of you that know anything about Metal Gear Solid 5 modding, uh, Uncle Jimbo, who does the gun pack, is currently doing a Zeta upgrade to make it compatible with Zeta. Um, so I went, I went to do that. Just one more mod I can, I can stop when I, yeah, exactly. I, like I said, I have a condition. I, I will be the first person to admit, I have a condition. I mod the shit out of my game. Horse spawned literally right in front of their outpost. Yeah, and, and they didn't even care, apparently. You know, I think we go up this plateau. Yeah, there's, there's the oil field proper. Now, normally, the oil facility. To stop the leak, you need to shut down the oil transfer pump and destroy the oily water separator tank. The details are on your iDroid. Normally, I would uh, I would just try to sneak in here and blow everything up. But as I said before, this is all OSP, and as you can clearly see, we have. We, we have no explosives. I did bring cardboard boxes for fast travel, but we have no explosives. So I'm gonna have to use another mechanic of this run, uh, specifically the fact that there's a 50% chance for guards to drop a random item whenever they're neutralized. Uh, so in order to get the explosives that we're gonna need to take out uh, the, the big oil tank in this facility, I'm gonna have to neutralize some guards. Uh, it's a risk-reward mechanic, but it's also uh, one of the ways to make the... That is not what I meant to do. Hey, quit kidding around. Snake? Snake! That is not what I meant to do. I, I told old boy to lay down, and instead he decided to just jump off a cliff and die. I'll tell you what, chat, I don't normally do this. I, I I, don't normally do this, but I don't really want to do everything that I just did again. I'm going to continue from checkpoint. You, you can screech heresy if you want. That's fine. That's fine. That This is not a situation where I did a dumb thing. This is a situation where the game literally did not do what I told it to do. And so I'm going to count that as a mulligan. It would be different if I intentionally walked off the cliff, but I did not. All right, Megas. Well, good to see you. Thanks for hanging out with us for a little while. Hopefully the D&D &D goes well. And, uh, and maybe we'll see you before the stream is over. It just depends on how long the game takes and how long we're doing this. I, I, again, I've said before, I have no idea how long the stream is going to be. Uh, I'm just kind of going to play until I get tired of playing, and then we'll call it a day. You get one freebie. Well, I appreciate your generosity, Sierra. I, I appreciate I appreciate you giving me that one freebie. And says so very generous of you. Now, I damn it, horse. This time, instead of jumping off the cliff, let's lay down a little bit sooner. 
And then we need to... I, I need to figure out exactly where the enemies are. Analysis complete. All right. And of course we are doing a no marking run and no marker run. So yes, I saw that dude, but he's not going to just be magically marked for me forever. I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to remember where he's at. It's really weird. I'm not actually seeing that many people. Analysis complete. Analysis complete. I feel like, and, and again, it has been a little bit, but I feel like there's normally more people Analysis in this complete. facility. Analysis complete. Oh, look at that guy. He's an S level. All right. The paperwork about where all the new recruits keep disappearing to piles of it. Look, we've only lost, what, two people, three people, something like that. Don't, don't, don't be a prima donna, Sierra. All right, I might fuck us when I go over this wall. Nope, we're okay. We are okay. I mean, we're still in the middle of the daytime, and I'm using woodland camo in an urban environment. So... We could definitely be under better circumstances. But it's not the end of the world. Yeah, this 150% this vision is really gonna kick my ass. Especially in the daytime. Need shorter shorts, need the Rhodesian security forces. Yeah. Yeah, if they're not boy shorts, are they really, are they really military? All right, let's do this. And again, we have no weapons. So if I get spotted, it's, it's a, uh, it's gonna be not good. Uh, looks like the guy that saw us from over this direction is not in fact gonna come this direction. So this guy's over here. Is there anybody else around the corner? There is. Shit. Alright, that's unfortunate. For, for multiple reasons. Booty shorts need a hot, need to ride high. I mean, that's, that's how you stay cool out here. In, uh, in the wilds of Africa. Are you really, you were gonna come over here anyway, and now you're walking back just so you can come back over here? Look, Erst, you are never going to convince me otherwise. I am perfectly aware of the length of the Rhodesian shorts. I still imagine, like, in my brain, because, because my brain is, is mush. In my brain, I always remember them as being booty shorts. I know objectively that they were not booty shorts, but that's the way my brain remembers them. God, my options are so limited here. Let me see. I might have made a mistake going over the wall where I did. I probably should have gone. Like, I probably should have come all the way around this wall and gone around the backside over there to try and jump that wall. Um, but too little too late. My dude, what it- Okay, there we go. He is- He is, in fact, moving. 
So I think he's going to go outside the wire, and then he'll come back in. If I do this just right, that might be my opportunity to neutralize him. Like I said, I got to find either a grenade or some C4 uh, in order to complete this mission. And that's, that's not even including the other shit I'm going to have to do. All right, please do not turn this direction. And right about now is where I'm going to get down on the ground so homeboy hopefully doesn't see me. Man, we are we are living dangerously here, Chad. We are living fucking dangerously. Stop it. Wake up. God damn it. Don't move. Thankfully, you don't need the translator. I'm sorry. I have no idea what they're freaking out about. I don't know why they're going on alert. Did, like, it didn't... It wasn't acting like they had seen me. Is this one of those things where some other goofy shit happened somewhere else on the map and it caused them to go on alert? Nope. Well... So much for doing this stealthily. Petrol bum might do the job. Your channel on YouTube where a former member of the Rhodesian Special Forces team interviews people who fought in the war in order to preserve their accounts. I mean, that's, that's one of the cool things, I think, about, like, YouTube and the internet is, like, there are so many stories like that that would have been lost to time that, that can now be preserved. Because, you know, there's two sides to every war. And, uh... Unfortunately, with the whole history is written by the victors thing, we often don't get to hear the accounts of both sides, at least not in an impartial way. Oh, God damn it! I don't want to shoot you, but you're going to make me shoot you. Yep. Give me a grenade or some C4. Come on, guys. Living up to your untag- I mean, to be fair, Max Dammit, which I like the name by the way, uh, to be fair, I'm playing on some insanely difficult settings, and I'm also like, this is the worst case scenario for the settings that I'm playing. Because not only am I playing with increased enemy vision, I'm also playing during the daytime, and I'm also in an area where the camo that I'm currently wearing does not help me blend into these surroundings. Like, it is... Of all the, the different scenarios that I could be in, this is literally worst case scenario for, for the gameplay settings that I'm, that I'm currently using. Shite. Son of a bitch! Believe it or not, I'm not trying to get made by every single enemy on the map.
And sadly, even though we technically haven't gone to full combat alert, every time I have to shoot, it's, it's drawing them closer and closer to where I am. And I am currently in a spot where, uh, there's not really a good way out. Alright, so let's hit the button. I still need explosives. I need either a grenade or C4 to blow up that tank. The mag would have been a good grab before I had to start shooting people. I mean, I can still potentially use it. But it's not going to be as effective. Bodies. Why? <laughs> oil transfer pump shutoff confirmed. Next, destroy the oily water separator tank. That'll ensure they can All never right. use the facility again. So... I could wait this out. Because, so if I go out the window here, I'm going to be dropping down right where all of the enemies are currently congregating. And the chances that I'm going to get seen again are even higher. If I go back out the way I came, I'm basically on a catwalk with no way out except to go back the exact same way that I'm going now. So, uh... We'll, we'll see. I mean, Erst, we're, we're not here. We're, we're not here to debate the realities of what is and is not possible, I mean, Big Boss yeah. isn't that smart, let's be honest. And Kaihei7 with the Prime sub. Thank you for the Prime. Says, hey, Mari, I've been binge watching your Mech Warrior 5 series and thought I'd pop up on Twitch to drop a sub. Well, thank you for the prime sub, Kai Hei. I do appreciate it. Again, for those of you that do not know, uh, Amazon Prime will allow you to sub to to one Twitch channel for free. So I appreciate you choosing to use that here. Oh, he's got a he's got a scatter gun. We're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. Uh, but thank you for coming over from the YouTube. So hopefully you've been enjoying the the Mech Warrior Five content. Um, we did actually finish up that campaign not too long ago, and that's why we're playing some Metal Gear now. Uh, just to mix it up a little bit. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate that you are enjoying the content. Uh, again, that's that's why I do it. So you guys can, can have some hot mech on mech action to enjoy, and also because I happen to enjoy the game as well. I mean, on the plus side, they're all going that direction. You know what I could do? Because as much as I don't want to kill everybody, as much as I try to avoid killing everybody, I think the point where I could have easily, you know, did these guys, like, like knocked them out, I, I think that point of this mission has already passed. Shite. Like, I'm just... I'm waiting for this dude to move. I don't want to shoot him. Well, never mind. I guess he wants to be shot. I just need an explosive of some kind. That man's literally just ran right past me. I'm not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth. Yeah. 
man. What kind of game are y'all trying to play with me here? Shit. Oh. That's right. Turn around, see your buddy, freak out, and then come over here. Just look over this direction. Look over this direction. I... What? So even with the increased setting, these, these guys are not always particularly smart. Oh my god. Chat, do you see what I see? We got what we need. We got what we need. Alright, buddy. I'm gonna do you a favor. And I'm not gonna kill you unless you make me. Don't. Just don't. Son of a bitch. So are you gonna... You, you're not gonna come charging up here? Okay. I was almost sure that that was gonna make that dude come running up here to check out the gunfire. It did not. Okay, so they're gonna- they're gonna go up there, I guess? Also, chat, rap with me here. Rap with me here. Under normal circumstances, these guys would not be using M16s. In reality, they should- they should probably be using a foul, right? In the 80s? In Africa? Fuck. Yeah, what he said. They're busy with that. I'm gonna get my goofy ass down here. Alright. I mean, to be fair, they probably would be using a an AK more than anything. But, like, in terms of the, the NATO-style weapons that were being used in this area of the world around this time, I'm pretty sure it would be the foul over an M16. Alright, let's see. Let's see. Ah, oh, hell. I mean, they're already on alert, so that guy's probably gonna come check that out. If they're South Africa, Rhodesia, ah, uh, they're Fal or G3. Yeah, and, and so, I mean, technically these guys are supposed to be, uh, PFs or private military companies. Um, I don't... Maybe they say where uh, Zero Risk and uh, Coyote are based out of? I don't think they... 
Maybe they do. I Somebody would have to go look it up on the wiki or something, but... Uh, but I, I don't know if they ever explain where... where these PFs are based out of. Okay, so our mans does not appear... Like, I don't actually know what they're saying because I don't have a translator. And... We're living dangerously out here. We are living dangerously out here. Now, here's, here's the upside to us getting C4. Because we got C4 instead of a grenade, I can actually place this C4 and get outside of the facility before I detonate it. So as long as I can get back out of here without getting seen, uh, then... I should be able to accomplish the mission without getting surrounded question mark. Alright. So we got the C4 planted. We've already turned off the, the magic button that apparently is, is gonna do all the work for us. Now, this dude who's, who's, you know, moving with a quickness is probably the one that saw me from a distance and... I'm sorry, what? Are you seeing me through the floor, you asshole? I really don't need this right now. I really don't need this right now. I assumed that old boy was gonna come running up. Well, you know what? Technically, he's running over to the other area. So if I can just, you know, sneaky snake my way back out the way I came in, since that's where most of the ja where where most of the dudes are already dead. Nah, the game's not cheating, Ro. I just have their uh, their vision turned way up even at night. So even at night, their vision is 125% of, uh, base game. I think I can get out this way. So, so they absolutely... Like, it does some weird stuff. Where they'll see you through stuff they wouldn't normally see you through, but by and large, it's just meant to make the game a little harder. Alright, uh... I think there's only the one left. Well, can I get out here? No, that's just water markings. That's not a ladder. Okay, so I have to live life dangerously, and we're gonna have to go up this ladder and hope that there's nobody around it that's gonna see me. Because if I get seen on this ladder, we are fucking toast. All right, now, now, Let's see, already full up on ammo, so I don't need that. Once again, thankfully, all the gunshots were coming from the opposite side of the facility, so I'm hoping that that most or all of the resistance over here is going to be. Uh, minimal. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Alright, things just got very interesting. Don't make me shoot you, boys. 
I'm not in this for the body count, but if you make me, I will do it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Son of a bitch. Well, that's it. Time to move. Do you know what? Can I go up over here? I can. Outstanding. Move faster, please. That sounds an awful lot like a sniper. Alright, so let's do this, and then... First things first. Let's get horse. Horse, you really gotta stop that shit. Now, next thing. Oh, wonderful. No shit. Will the game also randomly decide to put me a uh, hundred feet back from where I was? Horse. 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 Now, uh, I need to... Helicopter here. We got some walker gears over there in the forest. But they're more worried about the explosion at the moment. Which is good, that's what we want. Where exactly? Okay, it's directly ahead of us. Now, like I said, Vin, if if you're uh, if you're new to the to Metal Gear Solid Five, um, they don't immediately go on alert when they hear gunshots. They do the normal thing and they go check it out. Black carrot, something of an ancestor to the. Now, to be fair, uh, if I was on patrol and I heard a gunshot and then I went to check it out and I found two of my buddies dead, uh, that would be the immediate we're going to combat alert for me. Um, but video game. All right. I mean, to be honest... Yeah, exactly. You heard a gunshot. Call it in before you go. Which they were doing, it's just... It's harder to realize that they're doing that because I don't have a translator yet, so, like, I'm not getting the subtitles for any of the stuff that they're saying, but they did call it in before they went to check it out the first couple of times. After that, they were already in the caution state, and so they were just immediately going to check it out. Which doesn't make a lot of sense when you think about it. Because in a heightened state of alert, I would think you would be more apt to call in if you see or hear something that doesn't make sense. But that's not the way the AI works in the game. Boss, we took another look into Sainer, the owner of the... Uh, you know what, I'll I'll leave the cutscene for you guys. For for those of you that might be new to the series and, and want to hear this. They restarted the facility all the while pretending they were the victims. One other thing. Sainer's Johannesburg head office is just a room in a multi-tenant building. Company's essentially non-existent. Three years ago, that investment fund stepped in and started gutting it through a series of mergers and sell-offs. And get this, the fund itself no longer exists either. It's a shell corporation. 
meaning someone is just using Sainer's name from the shadows. But what about the yeah, exactly, Rose. If you're on a heightened state so of alert, then that, like, you there? should be calling in everything. Especially when the reason you're on heightened alert is because you found dead comrades. Like, I promise you, uh, it would be a whole lot harder if they reacted the way that people actually react when their squad mates or their platoon mates are just randomly found dead. Um, but again, video games. Hey, Snake, I've customized a walker gear just for you. It features a silent running system, great for infiltration missions, and you can also summon it to your location. I've taken the liberty of calling it the D-Walker. It's armed with a suppressed tranquilizer gun. If you want to add other weaponry or upgrade the chassis, give the order from your iDroid. Boss, if you got time on your hands, come spend it back at the base. The men will miss you if you're gone too long. Are we finally gonna get, uh, are we gonna get dog? But not actually be able to use him? I mean, technically I can use dog, it's just... He's not gonna be super useful in this playthrough. Boss, I've updated the mission list. We received a new job offer. It doesn't seem connected to Cypher or Skullface at all. But if it goes well, we may get an Afrikaans interpreter. Details are on your iDroid. Shut the fuck up, Emrick. No one likes you. Yeah. I mean, nobody that knows anything about him likes him. I have no idea why they're having us come back here. I thought it was for a cutscene, but apparently it's not. Okay, look, guys. I, I know I said this before, but, like, here's Miller just standing around on the platform. This is not a thing that normally Boss, welcome back. happens. Can I see QC Miller? <laughs> no. Okay. I thought it was going to let me see QC Miller. I was like, that's actually kind of fucked up. Oh, you, 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 you ain't, you ain't seen nothing yet, my dude. Be sure to thank me when, when you guys wake up. Miller, buddy, what's going on? Well, shit. Wow, look at you! You walked that off with a quickness, my dude. That, that's impressive. You see how fast this dude got up? Also, I want this. Give me the 177, even though it's not actually gonna let me keep any of this equipment when I go into the next mission. We show love with CQC, right. Beating the shit out of each other is our love language. 